Hey guys, it's Alex. So I just recently got back from doing some recordings for a bigger action film that's coming out next year. And while I can't give too many of the details of the film away because bigger productions get a little bit more secretive with their stuff, I did get some really interesting and I think unique recordings and I wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes stuff about how we went about capturing them. Now, the sounds that we needed were for a featured vehicle in the film, and it's sort of like a militarized dune buggy called a fast attack vehicle. And while we couldn't get access to the production cars, we ended up finding something really, really similar through a private owner about 10 minutes outside of Death Valley. All right, we are out here in the middle of the desert to record a sand rail. Now, what is a sand rail? This is a sand rail. And we need to get every possible sound that this is going to make. So we are currently rigging this up for onboard recording and getting small mics, lavalier mics, in every little place that we can that's going to get different aspects of this vehicle. Main point of focus is of course the exhaust, cables running to keep them out of the way. Doing the same thing on the other side to get a stereo image of again the other side of the exhaust. We're gonna have our onboard recordist sitting in the passenger seat. Which ended up being me to start off with, because anytime there's some kind of potentially dangerous field recording thing, I always seem to be the one that gets put in as like the guinea pig. And you know, there's this plane that crashes all the time because it's part helicopter and I'll just put Alex in the onboard, so he'll probably be fine. And if it crashes, ah, it's just Alex, who cares? And this sand rail, there are like 10 to 40 foot drops on either side of the, the little trail that we're gonna be driving on. And ah, just put Alex on it, it'll probably be fine. And I'm just thinking to myself, there's no medical attention tension within like 30 miles of anything here and uh, this could be the last thing that I do. And there's just nothing forever. Honestly though, the biggest danger is recording in the desert, especially with vehicles since they're such long days and you get, you know, really complex setups. It's the heat and it's staying organized. So make sure you always bring a hat and at least like three to four sound guys just in case you need to go through a few of them while you're recording and always voice slate your mic setups because those are gonna be the most important things to go through after the fact. On channel three, we have uh, from driver's perspective, far left, uh, DPA 4061. We used a bunch of different microphones to capture every character that we could think of with this vehicle, from the tires and the suspension to the engine and the exhaust, even the interior onboard, even though this thing was basically like a couple of chairs with just enough cage around it to like strap wheels onto it. And once we'd felt everything was kind of secured to the vehicle, we started dialing in levels. So let's go ahead and get this started up. I personally like to find the loudest sound that I'm gonna be recording and set my maximum level based on that. All right, you wanna give me a couple reps? Now, most sand rails are built sort of around a Volkswagen Beetle engine because it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit lighter, it gets the job done. This one was built around a 350 Chevy small block, which for anybody who doesn't necessarily know, it's a detuned Corvette engine. It's a 5.7 liter V8. This thing was serious. One more. <laughs> How do you want me to take off? Like a rabbit or like a whole lady? Which I kind of wish I had known at the time. Rabbits are good. Okay, let's do it. Also, if you have ever tried to go off-roading with no windshield at over 60 miles an hour and then tried to set levels on your tiny little recorder and say, oh, is this the optimal point that I should be recording at? This is why I recommend setting levels prior using the loudest sound you're gonna get. Everything you've heard up to this point has been GoPro audio, which sounds terrible because it's a GoPro. But with the right kind of wind protection and the right mic placements, you can get a lot of different and much better perspectives. So I will always cycle through all the various different mics that I'm using and hear just how good or bad they might sound.
way better and way more variety all the way around. The red coat wind protection that we used was really, really helpful in protecting against the wind, at least on the mics, but kind of introduced some other problems elsewhere. So I lost my hat. <laughs> it's pretty tough. <laughs> I think we might have to toss this. Is it done burning? Oh yeah. It's dead. <laughs> Once we got back to our start and away point, we realized it wasn't just the hats that had problems. Well, my poor hat is dead. <laughs> the engine burnt it. Where are you uh -oh. going to go? We gotta get uh, this out of here too. Eric! It's important in these kinds of situations where you have, say, a $4,000 microphone potentially being melted to remain calm. Dude! The mic! <laughs> oh my god. I would say our crisis response is pretty good. Maybe a little room for improvement. You said oh my God. Did that. we pick it up? Is it eaten through all the way? Did it get the mic or is it just the coating? No, it's just, it, it, it went into the Zeppelin. Oh, that's fine. That was on fire for a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happens when you don't properly secure your microphones and are working against heat. You get massive burn damage. That was right up against our uh, exhaust pipe there. You can see all the horrible fur. Three important things for this. First, those Manfrotto magic arms are usually pretty good, but on high vibration vehicles like this, where it's just so violent, did not work. It, we had to find another solution. Second, gaff tape is your friend. Always carry gaff tape, no matter what. It, it saved us in this capacity. And third, we Almost didn't roll that mic the rest of the day because we just we didn't think it was going to get anything But it ended up actually being our favorite perspective So anytime you're in a situation where you're like, ah, oh, maybe I just won't roll sound or oh, I won't use this microphone and It can be silent or anybody says oh, we're shooting this MOS So we don't need sound don't listen to them roll sound every time it could save your life or your production Whichever is more important. So one, one covers here This is gonna be a burnt stereo image. We call it <laughs> BPS, burnt stereo. Right. These are gonna be nice warm recordings. Yeah. I always want that nice analog hot. look. This is. They're gonna be hot. Yeah, hot cars. Yeah. Hot cars. This is a hot red. And my hands feel like your hat. <laughs> Should I pick it up? I think my lungs feel like my hat. Oh man. This poor red coat. Terrible. So with everything fixed, we moved on to start, idles, and revs from various different perspectives. Every vehicle that ever turns on has also got a turn off, so getting those clean offs that just roll into silence is really important too. After we got all our accessories, like brake pedal movement, steering wheel turns, that sort of stuff, we lined up to get exterior pass-by perspectives while recording onboards. And that's not always going to be the case that you're able to do both at the same time, but since we had four people out there and a driver, we were able to get everything done and it made it that much more efficient. Really? We also got a lot of really interesting incidental maneuvers because uh, sand rails are hard to turn. Didn't work. And moving around the desert in a very low clearance vehicle can be difficult in a lot of ways. After I'd decided I inhaled enough dust for the day, I traded out with one of our other recordists so that I could do some pass-bys and he could record onboards. And I usually try and space myself and other recordists about 100 feet apart, and that way you just get a, a good change of character across each pass that you do. It is super hot out here. This hat is really, really saving my life. And I think it's pretty stylish too.
Also, this Rycote Wind Protection is the Cyclone series, and this is my first time using it. I was really, really impressed with how it sounded, but the cable management in the field was really tough because it made the thing front heavy, and so it was a little more cumbersome than I'd usually like. The modular wind kits, in my opinion, are just as capable and a little easier to manage. But it always depends on what you're recording and how you're recording it. I think these Cyclones are great for more stationary stuff, like on a mic stand. And of course, don't forget to keep voice slating each take. That last panning, by the way, was a uh, whipping pan on this mic, the uh, chef. After we did all of our pass-bys and onboards at various different speeds from really slow to really, really unbelievably fast, we moved on to some more specifics for the film. Cruising around the desert in a vehicle like this, of course, kicks up a lot of dust, which is great for visibility, super safe. But once all that cleared, it allowed the driver to see a little bit better and try and run over Diego more accurately, and then know the exact right time to step on the accelerator and hit me in the face with a rooster tail of rocks. But seriously, these vehicles are a little bit hard to control, and they come with their own set of steering issues. My face hurts with rocks. My back. <laughs> Let's check the mic. Let's see. Obviously, these two were fine. Ooh, so that seems hot. Fortunately, our driver lived nearby, so he was able to make some impromptu fixes, get everything up to par again, and we were able to move on to recording tires on pavement instead of dirt, because obviously those are very different. And the film requires that we have both sets of surfaces, so it's really, really beneficial, if you can, to capture both authentically. The very last thing we were able to do as kind of an added bonus at the end of the day was capture the Sandrail's tires rolling down gravel with no engine noise. We ended up turning off the engine as this thing rolled down this hill. And we got that from various different perspectives, which is a lot more flexible cutting it together in post than having to deal with engine noise on top of tires. That ended our day of recording Ray's Sandrail, the sounds of which will be making their way to theaters next year. And if you want to know more about Eric, Diego, and Toby, go check out their IMDBs. I've got links in the description. Those guys have a huge amount of really awesome work between them. You've probably seen some of it before. Definitely should hear it if you haven't. Hopefully you enjoyed the behind the scenes. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. Come follow me over on Instagram at AXK. Thanks for watching.